hello and welcome to a completely new place in my house that I think you've only been to one time before and that was in my very first vlog and it was very briefly I was just kind of standing in front of my bookcases with the new year I have been like organizing everything that I can get my hands on sort of like a crazy person so I took recently all of the books off of all of the bookshelves in our house and I had them on the floor in this room. I'm currently in the upstairs of our house so I am in I think it's called the loft or the media room. It's like a long skinny room. There's two windows over there and the stairs are over here but we've got these two bookshelves here. We've got two identical ones on the other side of the TV over there and then two more over there and I can kind of give you an overview of the room but these two behind me this and that one over here they all have books on them those are not all of the books in the house we also have two more bookshelves in the guest room which is kind of behind this wall and down in there I'm not going to show you those because they're like religion books hobby books and foreign language books and I think that's it more of mom's books from like school and stuff but it's yeah there's not a ton of books in there I'm not going to show you those but I kind of wanted to show you guys my bookshelves again with the beginning of the new year I fell into what is called booktube so if you read books if you watch YouTube videos about books that's basically booktube and I found some people that I really like this year and they've talked about the same book called Atomic Habits and I now I want to read that one but while I have been watching those videos between like other things I have been reorganizing the house and so I recently reorganized these bookshelves and that bookshelf over there I'm actually really proud of I'm looking at it and it looks it looks really full but I, I love the way that it looks it's full of books and that makes me happy and so I kind of wanted to sit down and talk to you guys first and so I just did that but I'm going to show you my bookshelves because with you know falling into booktube I have kind of realized that I read a lot of the same books but that doesn't mean that other people necessarily read them and so if you have been looking for a series that you want to get into I am weird about books I like to start a series after it's finished if a new book is going to be part of a series and the new book is coming out you know this month I will wait until the last book in the series is published to start the series because I really don't like waiting between books and if I pick up a book and the series is finished I will buy the first book of the series and then read it and if I like it then I'll probably buy the rest of the series but if I don't like the first book I'm probably not gonna buy the whole series there are a couple of series on my shelf and I have not read them but I own the whole series because all they they both have really good reviews and so I just I was really excited about them when I got them and I haven't read them yet I've started one of them have not finished it yet because I just started the first book in the series this week but I just kind of wanted to share my books my taste in books because it's kind of a weird eclectic collection I'm sitting like these are all Nancy Drew books so there's some overflow down here but that's the first 64 of them and we've got some Barnes & Noble classic editions on the top and then over there is like um, self-help and nonfiction cookbooks I have a Disney shelf and I love my Disney shelf it's not like all 100% Disney but it's where I keep my Disney books and so I just kind of wanted to show you this because I'm really proud of it maybe that's weird but I'm gonna do it anyway so if you've been looking for some book recommendations I'm kind of gonna point some of my favorite books out as I show you the shelves this is not gonna be professional it's probably not gonna be like on the tripod because I don't have an extending tripod I just have like a tabletop tripod so I'm gonna be holding my camera the whole time so please forgive me if it's moving around but yeah I'm excited I wanted to show you guys this I've kind of wanted to do this for a while but I haven't been home and I really missed these bookshelves when I was in Alaska this summer Sherry has beautiful bookshelves 
but they're filled with her books. And while we read some of the same things, we don't read all of the same things. And so I really missed my books and my bookshelves. I did take an obscene amount of books with me this summer and I read some of them but not all of them. School kind of got in the way. I have been reading a lot of books for school and I don't track those on Goodreads. I probably should. And I've got a lot of books that I am in the middle of reading. And so I just, I don't know why I've been getting bored with them and putting them down and walking away. I started last, okay, October of 2019, I started reading the Harry Potter series all over again. And I went through one through three really, really fast. I started reading number four and I got like a hundred pages in and I quit. I just, I don't know what it was. I think I, it's because I know what's coming and I just was really kind of not disappointed, but I just, I know what's coming. And so I am sad and scared for the characters and I don't know what that why that does this to me but it just makes me not want to continue maybe that's odd I don't know but anyway I've I really want to re try reading number four again and I want to finish that series I've got a couple of other books that I have been trying to read and I just I'm in a weird rut with reading right now and the only thing I want to read is Pride and Prejudice and there's nothing wrong with that but I want to try to read some of these other books that have been on my shelves that I haven't read so that's my goal for this year I'm working through I just started a new series and I'll point that out when I get there but yeah I just I'm so proud of these books I love the variety of subjects and all of them it's funny because I took them all out I did them on car I did the Mari method, the Marie Kondo method, where you're supposed to take everything that you own of one, you know, kind of item and put it all in one place so that you touch every item. And if it doesn't bring you joy or if it doesn't serve a purpose, then you should get rid of it. And she says spark joy. And my mom and I kind of took it in a different direction. We call it if it's shiny. So all of my books are my shiny objects they make me so happy they bring me so much joy and their books yes like i'm looking at some of my school books they don't make me happy but they serve a purpose and so i need them and i know that and so still that makes me happy to know that i have the things that i need right so i have touched all of these books and some of them are not mine but they all you know make us happy as a family and so I'm just really happy with how this project turned out we have saved some space we have condensed some things I did get rid of a few books and those are already gone so I don't even have them to show you but yeah I'm just really happy with how this has turned out and I'll even you know give you an overview of our loft and kind of show you how we've been living for a while there are a couple things that are projects that need to be done that have just lived up here for the Christmas season because they just can't get done just because it's Christmas and we've been so busy and some of these things you know we need a handyman to come in and we don't have one and it's kind of difficult to do that right now and so we're just we're holding on some things right now but I think that's enough of me talking to you for now I am going to pick you guys up and show you the room okay so this is the shelf that i kept talking about that's got my school books on it and cookbooks and stuff panning over here's our couch and we've got a couple of filing cabinets a cat tree and over there those are our movies like dvds and over there we've got some board games on the bottom couple of shelves and then these are more books see that's where i was sitting just now I think, though, I'm going to start right over here because I think this shelf is really exciting because of that big red book right there. But we'll start, we'll start at the top. These are kind of Emma's books, like this is American Girl. I think she's actually a YouTuber. Um, I'm not sure how attached Emma is to these books, but I do know that The Princess Academy is a really fun book. The Earth, My Butt, and Other Big Round Things is really fun. These are books, I think it's like three and four. 
or four and five, I don't know, of the Wheel of, Wheel of Time series. And then these are kind of like older used versions of classic books, classic literature. And then over here is like my cocktail cookbook section. And then the financial piece, Dave Ramsey workbook kind of thing. Down here, I have some adult coloring books, which sounds really inappropriate, but really what it means is like fancy coloring books, not disgusting. And then like notebooks, and this is my planner from 2020. Didn't get much use. <laughs> and then my keto cookbooks. And I do want to do a video coming up soon talking about the keto diet and some tips that helped us. I had a really fun conversation with Lisa yesterday and it was all about you know like keto and getting started and where I found find stuff to help with that and so I kind of feel like I want to share some of what helped us and this section is all books that I've used for school and for my MBA and books that I like these I just found the other day at a used bookstore and they were really cheap but it's funny because I walked in and I didn't know what I was doing there, but my feet just kind of led me back to this section. And these three books called out to me and told me that I should take them home. And it's funny because I took them home and I used them last night on homework. So they were, they've really helped already. Moving down another shelf. These are all textbooks and like, so we've got business and finance and history and math and more finance and marketing. These are books I'm still using, but that shelf is too short. And yeah, the shelves are adjustable, but I didn't want to move that one again. And so I just put them down here and there was space, so it works. This shelf down here is my Disney shelf. Now this back here, I actually got at Box Lunch. That's not a book. That is like a cubby, or not a cubby. It's like a hidey hole kind of thing. This poems of Winnie the Pooh, obviously not Disney. You know, Disney didn't write it, but Winnie the Pooh kind of goes with Disney. And I've had that green book since I was a very small child. And the blue one next to it, I found at Tidal Wave in Alaska this summer. And these are the really cool like hidden art of Disney's golden age. So these are like uh, illustration and animation books that were done on Disney animation. And so it starts like with Snow White and works its way all the way up to now. So that's Frozen. Like how cool is that? And then I've got the official encyclopedia of Disney A, A to Z. This one is really fun. Let me see if I can open this up. I've got you on the floor now. This is the Lost Lectures of Walt Disney's Animation Studio. And it's all discussion. Like discussion of Mickey Mouse. I mean, how fun is this? And this is the class for layout men. How fun is this? And then there's a self-portrait. I just feel like this is a really fun book to learn more about like Disney Animation Studios. I don't know, I just thought that was really cool and I'm so glad I have it. It's really heavy though, like a lot heavier than it looks. This Artists of the Old West book, I'm not sure where it came from, but all it has in it is like artwork from the Old West. And this is the ultimate history of Mickey Mouse. This book and this book are both like coffee table books, but we don't have a coffee table. We do have sort of a coffee table in this loft, but we don't use it as that. And so they just live here and I've actually read them and flipped through them and I love them. They're so wonderful. They were actually gifts to me. And this 100 Wonders of the World we've had for a really long time. And over here is just like pad folios, extra pad folios, just because you might need a spare and then some like folders and this is some sketches that I've done like a long time ago. Going down one over here I've got like workout books and then a Zumba box and then 
a DVD set of Jillian Michaels body shred and I don't know why we have those. I will say Zumba will happen before Jillian Michaels will. And then over here I have some of my most used cookbooks. This one is where I got my eggnog bread recipe. This is the Maddie Matheson cookbook and um, I do really want to go through there and find some recipes, but we're doing keto right now and so I kind of want to go through there and see if there are any recipes that I can make into keto. And this one is like, the skinny one is low carb, and this is low carb. This is paleo Mediterranean, but those are some cookbooks that I've found some really nice recipes in, and a lot of them are really old. I think the only one that's new is the Maddie Matheson book. And now I have the section of what I'm calling self-help or self-improvement. This section from the baking book, this is all organizing books and Okay, so this one is old, very old. These are the KonMari books, both of them. I love these because it kind of talks about how to get rid of things and not feeling, not feel guilty about it. I just bought the home edit books and I don't have any thoughts on them yet just because I haven't had enough time to actually read them. And I do know that this one year to an organized life kind of gives you tasks throughout the year. Instead of doing it all in a weekend, it kind of spreads it all out over some time so you've got more time and you don't feel so pressured. Over here I've got the rest of the self-help or self-improvement and I'll censor this one because that's not a nice word, but it's a theory about a certain type of person. Yeah, I don't... I have read it and I think a lot of people should read it. It's really snarky, and so if you're not into that kind of thing, then don't read it, but I think it's fun. And the same thing with this one, too. At least that one's sort of censored. But, like, the art of people, and then there's one, like, saying what to say to get what you want. So, you know, it's just, like, how to deal with people. And then over here, these are, like, learning books, how to learn anything quickly, how to sew a button, like this pink one. It looks really cute. It's actually really, really helpful. Like other nifty things your grandmother knew. Because like, if you don't have a grandma like I don't, then you need something like this to teach you all of the secrets of life le life's lessons. All right, my camera battery is dying, so I'm gonna just show you this shelf. Pioneer Women books are over here, but these are all cookbooks. Those are like magazines back there, but this is all cookbooks and a cat. I love you. I have a new camera battery and look who's helping now. Oh my goodness! Meow! I love how you stretch your little toes. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna keep looking at the shelves. And I, okay, so I'm not gonna really go into detail on the top ones, except for this one right here. That's Jane Austen, all of them. So, gotta love that. But these are all Barnes & Noble, like those classic editions. And if you don't know, the time to get these is Black Friday because they go on sale on Black Friday so don't get them any other time. And then just below that we've got Custom of the Country and this is by Edith Wharton. There are some other books in there. I don't know that her characters are really compelling. It's sort of like The Great Gatsby. They're all kind of terrible people. I have not read this one yet but I feel like I'm gonna love that one. Titans is one of my very favorite books of all time. If you are asking me for a book recommendation and you don't mind uh, like historical fiction, then I'm gonna tell you to read this one. I just, I can't get enough of it. I've read it so many times. It flips perspective between like the guy's name is Nathan and the girl's name is Samantha set early 1900s in Texas and it's wonderful. I can't get enough of it. I just, I love it. So I have also several other books by the same author. 
So Roses and Somerset. I think this one is a sequel to this one or set later or something. And then I've got The Wizard of Oz and The Emerald City of Oz. This is books 1 through 10. They did have another book with 11 through 15 and it was read called The Magic of Oz and I can't find it anywhere but I do know that it existed once and I would like to have it. It's not necessary for me to have it. Great American Short Stories. I don't know what makes these great. I think most of them are just garbage. They're just bad stories, but maybe they were good then. I just find them really difficult to read. And these are classic American speeches. Kind of wordy, kind of interesting. I used it for a history class. And then we've got the smaller versions. Okay, so up here, these are the large, gigantic editions of, you know, classic literature. These are sort of like children's versions because they're smaller and lighter and easier to hold in little hands. This is not, this is Uncle Tom's Cabin. I purchased this at Tidal Wave in Alaska and this one too, I think. And I just love it. Look how beautiful that is. I can't get enough of Pride and Prejudice. I have three copies and this is one of them. And then I've got some Charles Dickens and then Stardust which is a Neil Gaiman movie. I've not read the book, but I had to buy the book because I saw the movie in theaters like seven times because I loved it so much. So I felt like I should have it. All right, now we're moving into some boxed sets. I'm gonna take a couple steps back. Up on top, behind our little precious moments nativity, you can see our these like boxes. So those were the boxes that these box sets came in. I can't bring myself to get rid of them because they're kind of nice boxes. So I have the box set of Mark Twain um, and of Green Gables and I actually read every single one of these last year and loved them. I couldn't get into Anne when I was a kid. I don't know why. I love her now. I just thought she was great. And then Charles Dickens. I did read A Christmas Carol at Christmas time out of this. Uh, there, then there's like a Bronte sisters set. So all three Bronte sisters, um, but like different novels from each one of them. And then Jane Austen, you can see Pride and Prejudice is missing because I made Emma read it. Put Winnie the Pooh back. And then these two are actually two different sets of like children's literature. And that set of four, I think was, the covers were illustrated by Rival Paper Company. And these six are just lovely. I love them. And then in here, I've got a bunch of bookmarks. And I bought these on Amazon. These are like metal feathers. What I really like about these is they're sturdy and they're really hard for me to lose. So I have a ton of those, but most of them are actually in books on these shelves. Next shelf has the Lunar Chronicles. And if you haven't read them, you really, really should. Just do it. Entwined is like, I think this is supposed to be a retelling of um, 12 Dancing Sisters, I think is what this one is. The 12 Dancing Princesses, sorry. And then this one is The Treachery of Beautiful Things. I put these together because they kind of look similar, but, um, also, they don't have another place to go, and so they go here. This Lost in a Book book is set within the timeline of the live-action Beauty and the Beast movie with Emma Watson. So if you really liked that movie, this book is basically, I want to call it like a fan fiction of that movie. So basically, it takes place while she's in the castle before she, like saves the beast and everybody. And then these are like two series, they're kind of, I mean, they're by the same author, kind of related, I think. This is the Four Kingdoms series, and this is the Beyond the Four Kingdoms series. And I have read most of these, like most of them, love a few of them. This is a gift from Janice. Janice, if you're watching, I don't know when we're gonna, buddy read this with, you know, with me, with Adam and Sherry, but that really needs to happen because I'm excited about it. Now this series is weird. This is a fantasy series. So it's these five books here 
Air Awakens, Fire Falling, Earth's End, Waters, Wrath, and Crystal Crowned. It reminds me a lot of the new Star Wars trilogy, like the newest one with Rey and Kylo Ren. I don't know what it is about it, but I love it. The author lives in Tampa, so I kind of love supporting the local author. This is sort of like a novella to go along with the series because you, the Golden Guard trilogy is three different books about three different characters that you meet in the other, like the rest of the series. So I kind of just love all of this. I've read it multiple times and she has so many other books and I just, I want to finish reading all the other books on my, you know, list so I can keep buying her books. This is called French Women Don't Get Fat, The Secret of Eating for Pleasure. That is one that I have been meaning to finish reading for a while. And then the rest of these books back here, like those back there are journals. And these are just kind of like 13 powerful ways to pray and Mr. Rogers quotes and wise words and philosophies. So not really important to get into those, but on this shelf, two series to recommend, the Lunar Chronicles and definitely the Air Awakens series. I know this is available as, as an ebook series. I definitely recommend you check that one out because you probably haven't heard of it. If you have, then let me know because I loved that series. Moving this way, um, I have some books that don't belong to me. These are Emma books and this is a series that I really want to read. I was going to start reading this one and I just, I opened the book, I closed the book and I put it back. I just couldn't get into it. I'm not sure why. This is a duology, so there's two books in this series and I made Sherry read this one. Like, who does that look like? Doesn't that look like Merida? I mean, I like the Disney princess. I just, and it kind of gives me Celtic vibes, sort of. So that is definitely a duology that I love and recommend to people. I am kind of into this one, The Royal Governess. This one is, I want to say it's nonfiction. I can't tell if it's nonfiction. It's a novel of Queen Elizabeth II's childhood. So I don't know. I just saw it in the bookstore and it called to me. And sometimes books do that. And when they do that, you just have to listen to them. Okay, The Forbidden Garden is... This is what I would call a book for older people. Like, this is not for a 12-year-old girl. This is for, like, a 25 to 45. You know, this is for a mature woman. And it's wonderful. And the cover is beautiful. It almost kind of reminds me of The Secret Garden. But for grown-ups, I don't know. It's just magical. And there's some kind of magic in there. Okay, Dorothy Benton Frank. All the single ladies and the Hurricane Sisters cannot recommend those enough. The Hurricane Sisters is really fun. It's like three gen three generations of weird, strong, powerful women. And I love it. It's just really, really good. All right, on this next shelf, you've probably seen these books before. We have the Divergent series. We have the Delirium series. This is dystopian. This is dystopian. This, I think, is called the Lone City Trilogy, I think. And this one is kind of dark. This is also kind of fantasy. I wouldn't call this dystopian. I don't know. I just, it's almost kind of dystopian, but there's magic in it. So if you're strict, then it's fantasy. This is The Hunger Games plus the new book and have not finished this one. I tried to read this this summer and decided I would rather restart the series so I can get into it. Then there is the selection series because I love this series. There's one thing about the series that drives me crazy and it's only that I don't have this one in hardback. I don't really mind because it's the same for this series and this series, so it's okay. I have not read The Siren yet. Sherry says it's really, really good and that she wished it was longer. So that one is definitely on my list to read. And then the Three Dark Crowns series, I have not read. These are the two series I was talking about earlier that I own all the books, but have not read any of them yet. I am currently reading this one. I am on chapter six, I think, 
of that one and liking it so far. So I wanted to finish this series first and then work into this one maybe, or maybe I'll read something familiar in between. I really don't know. But I'm really excited about those two series. I can't recommend them because I haven't read them, but I can tell you I'm really excited to read them. All right, just a couple more shelves. This is obviously my Nancy Drew shelf, and I do have them in the proper number order, and then the rest of them that didn't fit on the top shelf, or the above shelf, fit down here, so they live there. And this annotated Wizard of Oz I actually found, again, at Tidal Wave in Anchorage, and then these are more, well, these are Barnes & Noble, like, children's books. Kind of have to have another Winnie the Pooh book. I'm keeping this one over here because it goes with all of these. Charlotte's Web. And I love the illustrations in these. I think they're wonderful. This is American Fairy Tales. And they're fine. It's okay. It's a book that we've had for a really long time. This is The Princess Bride. If you haven't read this and you like sarcasm and comedy and adventure, you should read The Princess Bride. But you can't believe anything the guy says because everything is a lie. That's just the way that it is. And then Mary Poppins. And I do really love this version because, like, in what world does Mary Poppins look like that? Hers, apparently. So, anyway. And also, I do have these book corners on some of my books. I bought those book corners on Amazon and put them on myself. And I love them. I put them on some of the books that I thought were the heaviest or would get some of the most... Um, use or, you know, would be seeing some of the greatest trauma. I've Gone with the Wind in a box and I love it. It's a beautiful copy. It came with a really cool bookmark. I'm keeping it in the box because it's just so pretty. And that's kind of a trend with me. I want to protect my books. I learned this from my mom. We can have things and use things but she wants us to keep them nice. And to me, that means leaving the box set in the box. Like this Nancy Drew box set is still in the box. Why? I don't know, but it is. And so this is the Chronicles of Narnia. This is a really cool find from the Tidal Wave bookstore in Anchorage. I wasn't looking for a box set, but I had just finished this because this is like a paperback bind up of all of them. And it was really hard to read because it's so thick and floppy and it just kind of didn't want to hold up to me taking it anywhere. And so I wanted the single books and I was looking on Amazon and then we went into Tidal Wave and found this and I couldn't leave without it because it was such a good price. And so it was just, they came home with me. And then I've got some Tolkien and this is like, this is not Lord of the Rings. This is like an annotated version of Beowulf. But these are all books set in the Lord of the Rings world. This is The Hobbit. This is the three Lord of the Rings books. This is Tales from the Perilous Realm. I think that Tom Bombadil is in this one. If you've read Lord of the Rings and you know Tom Bombadil and you haven't read his story, it's, I think it's in that one. Yeah, it's in that one. And he's, that guy just cracks me up, but these are like stories about elves and you learn about Arwen's history, tree, like family tree and where she came from in that one. This was a gift and these are letters from Father Christmas because Tolkien used to write Christmas cards to his children as if he were Santa when, he, when they were kids. And so, like, look at how wonderful these are and so each page has a letter and then the text is you know transcribed over there but the some of the letters are really short and really frilly but I just think this is wonderful and look there's an illustration I just think it's wonderful completely magical and you know I love Christmas and so it's just, I love it. And then these two books over here, Hiding Behind Father Christmas. The Scottish literature I used in an English course 
in college and the same with literary theory that was actually a critical approaches to literature class I actually really enjoyed that course after I had time to th think about it and kind of put my ideas together but at the beginning of the course I didn't like it very much because it just felt like can't I just read the story and then I started learning the purpose but anyway so this shelf down here is weird because we've got Dr. Seuss We've got Mother Goose and like more Mother Goose and then some like taller children's books and then we have Harry Potter and I put him down here because he's heavy. The This is the original like Scholastic set that we have. Don't ask me why we have a second six. I have no idea but we do. So it's just shoved up there but these are really heavy. We got these from the Scholastic book sale. It was the books, like the whole box set. And I feel like this was a gift for my dad. I feel like we got this for him for Christmas and then he never read them or he read them once and then got the ebook or something. I don't know. And then over here, we've got some more children's books, but these are basically great big heavy books like bedtime stories and animals and this is the world treasury of fairy tales and this version is just lovely like look at that i think that one came from books a million and it's it feels like a little pillow because it's kind of squishy and it's called a family heirloom of stories to inspire and entertain and i did put the corners on this one but it's like rapunzel and hansel and gretel the Story of Hyacinth and Rose Blossom, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Fairies, Goldilocks. Like, I just think this is so wonderful. You have to have a fairy tales book, right? And then over here are some books that we've actually had since my sister and I were kids. And these were bedtime stories that my mom used to read to us. and Or that we used to just read just because we wanted to hold a book in our hands so I'm not going to show you the rest of the books on on this shelf over here just because they're like not interesting and so there's our shelves all right well I've got you on the tripod now I'm just holding you because I think that's going to be it for today's video I showed you my bookshelves I should have taken some before pictures so you could have seen what it looked like before I organized them but it was a mess and so now they're kind of sorted, sort of by genre, sort of by author's last name. The cat is asleep on the floor. I don't know how she can do that because I'm talking and she doesn't seem to care. But anyway, I hope that you got some book recommendations from this. I hope you got some organizing inspiration from this. Maybe you didn't, but I have a feeling there will be a lot more organizing inspiration coming soon because I'm on a kick and this is like a mood for me and now I just want to organize and purge and sort things. I don't know. It's weird. I'm crazy. But I think that's going to be it for today. You guys will see me in another video really, really soon.